Welcome to Youth Arts and Action's Inspiring Artists series. I'm uh, Marie Sasha Khan, mentor for Youth Arts and Action, and today I'm interviewing Erich Mukhamedov. Uh, he's a former star with the Royal Ballet and the Bolshoi Ballet, and basically a living dance legend. And I'm very happy to have the opportunity to sort of pick his brain today, and excited to hear what he has to say. So. You know, what's the beginning, what were the beginnings of your stardom, you know, where did you have your humble beginnings? Um, well, it's uh, in Russia, we all have this, you know, in England, uh, for example, they say everybody can sing. Yeah. In Russia, they will be saying everybody can dance. So okay. we had this, I was dancing in the pioneer clubs when I was four. Okay. And then the teacher said to me, to my parents, I should go to ballet school. Okay. And that's kind of, kind of began that idea of me ballet dancing. But eventually, by the, by the years I understood, I think I was born to be a ballet dancer. Mm -hmm. So then it's Moscow Bolshoi Ballet Academy. Then it's uh, Moscow Classical Ballet, which is uh, where I've been for three years after school. And I learned a lot. I prepared myself for the competition. And then competition where I won Grand Prix and then in Bolshoi. Okay. What do you think is, what was the most important thing that you gained from the Bolshoi Ballet Academy that you used in your career? Well, it's, it's uh, the, first of all, I, I gained it's uh, what my teacher was uh, giving to me. It's Alexander Prokofiev, okay. who taught us it's not only we can jump, the meaning of jump the idea of why we are in the air, mm -hmm. why we're doing pirouette, why we're doing, why the muscles are working this way. So it's a kind of idea not just to uh, use your muscles, but idea why we're using them. There's a, there's a logic in it. So uh, we finished school literally prepared being to, to lead the ballets because we practically were ready to be an artist already. There's a very different tradition in Russia as compared to the Western world where they already know when you graduate, right, that you're being prepared to become a principal dancer. So was that with your case when you graduated? Did they already prepare you and tell you you're going to be dancing principal roles? Well, I, I finished school as a principal dancer because okay. I was doing Copelia France and that's the graduation performance. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, doing the already principal role. Right. But then uh, I didn't, it wasn't, wasn't being taken to Bolshoi because into Bolshoi you have to have a, you have to be Moscovite. Okay. So uh, I've been taken to a smaller company. Where were you born? Uh, I was born in Kazan. Okay. I'm a Tartar, I'm not Russian. Okay, lots of fire still. Yes. <laughs> Even more fire. <laughs> And then you moved over to the West, you came to the Royal Ballet. Yes, it's after uh, nine years in Bolshoi. Uh, we decided to, because Masha and my wife become pregnant, so we decided to think about family more than okay. <laughs> us. And we moved to well, London because they, they were happily accepted me to be a resident dancer, okay. not just a guest. I was supposed to be guesting with the Royal Ballet okay. during Bayadere, but then I asked if I could be permanent there. Oh, I bet they were excited. They were, <laughs> yes, and they were excited and they accepted me to be a member. Well, it's been such a sort of great gift for the Western world because um, I have to say I personally remember um, the very first professional ballet performance I ever saw. Uh, you were dancing Mano with Viviana Durante. Okay. And I mean, I'd never seen ballet before, and to have that sort of as my first performance, and to understand that you could move people through that medium of art, and I just remember that you just you stepped foot on stage, and this humongous opera house exploded in applause, and I remember just thinking, wow! I mean, one person can move people so much that they step on stage, and everyone is just, you know... So, I just um, wanted to ask you, how does that feel to have that 
in a way, that power, you know, that presence on stage. What is that like? I just want to add to that what you said. Yes. I think as well the English public are famous for if they will love, they will love forever. Okay. So, um, but I think it's it started it with the tours with Bolshoi Ballet mm -hmm. because we've been in London twice before we so I joined. Seen you. Yes, they see me dancing. Okay. They see me dancing all the strong ballets, and uh, so like Spartacus, Ivan okay. the Terrible, Golden Age, where you can really literally break your back, <laughs> everything. So, but uh, when I came to London, uh, I have to really, literally, um, put it aside, what I know, okay. to learn the what royal ballet da, do, they style, they kind of understanding of the steps mm -hmm. so uh, and uh, the Manon was one of the big challenges because that's pure English ballet yes the pure Kenneth Macmillan I was really nervous about it oh because it's a it's such a thing after Spartacus where it doesn't matter how you stand here in Manon you have to have a fifth position you have to have a beautiful uh, arms and body and everything and then to Nidal after Nidal it's very difficult to dance this kind of ballets <laughs> because it was created on him. Right. So, um, and I managed. And oh, we had yes. a, a <laughs> success. <laughs> with, to put it very lightly. <laughs> yeah, we, we, we had a huge success and the audience loved it. Kenneth McMillan came up to me and said, you can call yourself now English dancer. So I think as well that kind of, um, and Kenneth gave me the freedom of expressing myself as mm -hmm. well. He never said that it should be like this. I went through what I feel, and for me, I live on stage, you know, it's my life. Yeah. I become De Griot, for example, if yes. we're talking Manon. If we're talking Meiling, I become Prince Rudolf. Mm -hmm. So, uh, this is kind of, I think that's what it makes, probably, artistically, that's what it makes person stand out. Not just being, coming on stage and do what the choreography do, yeah. but being an artist and, uh, you know, it's in a, I remember when I was talking to Rudolf Nureyev, Rudolf explained to me there is the kind of graduation in the ballet world. Yeah. You, when you finish school, you become ballet dancer, mm -hmm. you professional ballet dancer. Then you become, say, solist, principal. Then after principal, you become a star. Mm -hmm. after, print, after star, you become an artist. After artist, you become a personality on stage. Interesting. So at the end, like Rudolf Nureyev, it was already personality. Mm -hmm. It wasn't really Rudolf Nureyev, it was something else. Mm -hmm. yeah? So that's kind of graduation goes. You become yeah. artist and then eventually, the, uh, as I mentioned before, uh, because I put it aside of Bolshoi style, yes. so then eventually when I understood what I can do with the Royal Ballet style, mm -hmm. I put it that together and become Eric Mohamed style. Okay. Even better. Yes, of course, <laughs> the best. <laughs> Yes, sir. <laughs> okay. Do you have maybe, because you have a very good sense of humor yeah. and I've uh, very much enjoyed your classes because, not just because of the expertise that you're passing on, but because you have so much joy when you're teaching and, you know, you absorb that, of course, from you. So it gives so much energy, so much motivation. So I wanted to ask you if you perhaps have, you know, one little funny story you could tell from your career or stage, you know, something. Well, you know, really it's difficult to, um, to think so. Okay. I don't know. Uh, but you obviously find us having a sense of humor as being very important. Well, of course, just, because yeah. it's, um, as you mentioned yourself, uh, the, you, we not only the, have to come the, to do the work, we have to enjoy the work. Yeah. And because it's a uh, ballet, is most hardest job ever. <laughs> Even yeah. though not the coal miners, they, it's easier than, than we do. And... Uh, I understand, and it's everything uh, I've been through myself that, of course, uh, but I understand you, and that's why I wanted to make sure you actually listen to me, right. but at the same time having the, not, not really fun fun, we're all jumping around, no, but no. enjoying as well, mm -hmm. yes, so that's why it's sense of humor is very important in the studio, mm -hmm. and then it's, uh, it's actually atmosphere become better and you actually work better. Yes, you yeah. have a lot of motivation. Yeah, you exactly. want to do it. Exactly. Yeah. 
And uh, the other question I had for you was, you recently actually awarded my brother Julian McKay yeah. uh, the gold medal at Istanbul competition. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to ask uh, what you look for in young dancers, and not just at competitions, but perhaps if you're in a company and you're coaching someone young you know, to do a principal role, uh, what do you look for in them that would say something to you, okay, you know, this is someone I can develop? Well, it's a, first of all, of course, uh, it's, it's not really difficult for, for us uh, when we are already 36 years in this uh, business. Uh, it's, I can see the talent. Okay. I can see talent, what people, what, what they have. And just my, my point is to manage to help to develop that talent better, mm -hmm. but for dancer to develop they self, themselves and their talent better, they have to have a brain, they okay. have to think yeah. all the time, mm -hmm. they have to know what they're doing, they have to feel the, their body, mm -hmm. uh, it's, uh, sometimes we can say it corrections, but uh, most That's of the time, cool. most of the time dancers are having self-criticism more than, than anything else, we are, we are, but sometimes you need to trust people with whom you're working. Yeah. And that's that's how it actually goes. Mm -hmm. Because no one, neither Rudolf Nariv, neither Misha Barishnikov, neither Natasha Makarova, go, become who they are without teachers. Mm -hmm. So that's the important thing. So dancers have to listen to the teachers. It doesn't matter. Sometimes it works, sometimes it's not. But continue trusting. Okay. And then yeah. it works. And then it's become confidence. What in young people are missing, it's confidence. Okay. They were kind of... Uh, not, not in a way, they don't know their bodies. Yeah, this that's the problem. Yeah, the experience. because, because they, they literally they need to trust themselves. Okay. They need to feel, again, I'm repeating myself, their muscles, the body, and then they become confident because they know what body can do. Mm -hmm. So they know their limitations. When they step foot on the stage, they know what's kind of. Yeah, no, the, the, there's no limitations. Oh. That's the idea. Okay. The, yeah. where, where the talent is possible to grow as far beyond the skies, yeah. so it's up to the person, but well, anything you need to, whatever you need to achieve, you have to put an effort for it, yeah. whatever, even to sew the shoes, you have to put an effort yeah. for it, yeah? so, so anything, particularly in the, in the ballet, uh, in the dance, you have to make sure it's uh, flawless, effortless, mm -hmm. aesthetically correct, mm -hmm. aesthetically beautiful, mm -hmm. yes? even if it has to be carabos still be have to be aesthetically beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what it's need for young people. I really uh, believe in themselves, trust themselves, think with the body mm -hmm. and be confident. And then teachers can help even better. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much. Okay, it's yes, okay. been such a pleasure. Okay. And uh, this is Eric Mukhamadov and uh, I'm Maria Sasha Khan and this was Youth Arts and Actions Inspiring Artist Series. See you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>